Hello, everyone. Um, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so this is our first session in our Get Ready for Jesse webinar series. Um, so great to have you here. Uh, my name is Stacey. I am a marketing executive within the language department um, here at Trinity College London. Uh, today's session will be on choosing the appropriate grade. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the host of today's session, which is Sean Sweeney. Hello, Sean. Hello. Nice to see you all here. Thank you. Uh, Sean uh, is a teacher and trainer and he has over 20 years of ELT experience. And key interests um, include listening skills, assessments and TBLT. Um, he's worked in various contexts um, all over the world, um, longer stretches in Italy, Spain, the UK and Japan. Um, and in 2020, he co-founded Dublin TEFL, uh, which provides teacher qualifications, such as the Trinity's DIPTESOL, um, as well as tailor-made CPD and consultancy services. Um, so you're in good hands today. Uh, Sean, thank you very much. Uh, before I hand over to you, um, I'd just like to let everybody know that we do, if you do have any questions for Sean, please ask them. Um, we do have a Q&A box available um, at the bottom of the screen, so if you can please send them in there, and at the end of the session then we'll we'll be able to go through them. Okay, so thanks again for coming. Um, I'll hand you over to Sean to begin the session. Thanks, Sean. Thanks so much, Stacey. Thanks a lot. Uh, hi, welcome, everyone. Um, good to see you. Also, in the chat, do, do feel free to type in the chat, say where you're joining from, um, and we can see where everyone is. At any stage through throughout the, the session, you can type questions. There is a Q&A uh, box, yeah, as, as Stacey pointed out. Um, I might ask you as well to type things in the chat just to get some response and see if we can uh, tailor the content slightly to, to your own uh, specific interests um, and uh, experiences with Trinity as well. So here we go. It's um, We're looking at Jesse, especially um, today. Here's an overview of um, the session. Um, one moment, we'll move on to our, our next slide. Uh, so we have, here's an, here's an outline of today. And we're looking at um, a brief introduction to Trinity, an overview of the Jesse tasks, choosing the grade, the appropriate grade, of course, that's the main thing today. Um, working with multi-level groups, which I'm sure um, a lot of us do. And um, then we'll, we'll wrap up and there will be some time after I point out some resources for questions at the end. Um, so uh, do, do be typing those in as we go through, okay? And we'll, we'll come back to those. Um, I can see already there's some activity in the chat. That's great. Um, yet you can certainly, I see there's one in there. Uh, Alameen, thank you. Yes, you can certainly ask questions uh, and share your thoughts. I'll save some time for that at the end, okay? All right, let's continue. Um, so a very brief overview of um, Trinity College, uh, Trinity College London. Um, as you probably know, it's a reputable exam board. Uh, it's been around for a long time, 1877. Um, it started providing assessments and it's got very broad recognition from a variety of um, industry, government, university bodies as well, um, which is no doubt why, why we're here, finding out how to get our students to uh, become involved and get accredited. We're focused on Jesse um, very much today, but you might know some of the other qualifications that Trinity offers. Uh, in terms of English language, there's the ISE, which is a four skills exam. Um, and Trinity Stars, which is performance based uh, for very young for young learners. Um, and of course, teacher quals as well, teaching qualifications such as the CERT TESOL, the DIP TESOL, CERT OT and CERT PT. Let's have a look at the different um, levels, though, in terms of JESSE. Now, as you may know, there are 12 levels, um, uh, 12 grades rather in, in JESSE, we should call them as uh, as they are in the specifications. Um, and we have, uh, so Jesse grade one, two, and three is right up to um, A2. So in the sort of pre-intermediate phase, moving into intermediate, you have grades five, six, seven, eight, and nine in the lower and the upper intermediate phase. And then you have the advanced grades, which is from grade 10, 11, and 12, okay? Um, you can also see at the top here the ISC um, equivalents if you have students doing the four skills uh, exam. Um, let's take a look in a bit more um, detail at what's involved in JESSE, the graded examination in spoken English, what's involved um, at each level. 
all exams have a conversation um and that's um a word which is chosen quite aptly it is a two-way conversation as much as possible even from a very low level um, rather than some sort of recitation or performance so there's a lot of interaction that goes on with the examiner and the candidates throughout um, you can see that the first three levels that's uh, grade one two three taking us up to sort of pre-intermediate a 2.1 on the CEFA, the cefr is just a conversation phase there's one phase it's heavily supported by visuals. The examiner will be asking questions like, look at this, what is it? Is he playing the piano? Um, other th things like rooms in the house and so on at grade two and everyday activities at grade three, heavily supported by visuals. And it's it's a short examination, okay? Once we get into um, more sort of pre-intermediate and lower intermediate, be up from A2.2 to B1.2 on the CEFA, uh, you have two phases. First, there is a topic discussion, and then there is a conversation. And you may know uh, the topic discussion is it's something that sort of sets the Trinity exams apart, in fact, compared to many other exam boards. This is candidate-led, and it's candidate-chosen. The candidate chooses in advance a topic they want to talk about, something that they find interesting, that they will bring to the exam, and then discuss with the examiner. So, for example, uh, I don't know, grades four and five and six, Funnily enough, I've been doing, I work as an examiner, I've been doing a lot of these this morning, um, sort of topics that candidates came to talk to me about were things like their favourite football team, their dance group, favourite musical artists, um, Japanese anime, uh, books they like, all kinds of things um, that they are interested in, they can prepare, and that's the first five minutes of the exam. That continues throughout grades seven, eight and nine, and becomes more of a formal topic presentation in the advanced grades okay so that's what happens from um, grade four and above and then you finish with a conversation you'll notice here then uh, there's an interactive task this comes in at grade seven uh, and continues right up to 12 so from grade seven to 12 there's an extra phase it's actually in the middle of the exam first the candidates do a topic and then there's an interactive phase this is in the interactive phase the onus is very much on the candidate to ask questions, to make com uh, comments um, based on a topic prompt that the examiner will start with. Um, again, I was examining this morning and here's a quick example, maybe from grade seven. It was, I'm thinking of going on a holiday with my friends, but we can't decide where to go. And then the examiner says nothing and it's up to the candidate to kind of lead, maintain the conversation um, and initiate a lot more. That's the interactive task. OK, so yeah, we've got five minutes topic, five minutes interactive and five minutes conversation. Um, once you get to the advanced grades, there's the addition of, um, well, the topic becomes a more formal presentation for five minutes. And then it's followed up with questions and discussion uh, in the topic discussion from the examiner. And there's also the addition of a five minutes listening task. This is live listening, what I, by which I mean the, the examiner reads from a script. It's not a pre-recorded uh, listening. And the candidate answers there and then. Um, and the candidate answers orally as well. It's, there's, it's not a written listening test, okay? Um, so that's the format, okay? You may be already very familiar with that. I don't know, it depends because we're all from, you know, different, different sectors, different backgrounds. Um, but it's important to get a, a quick overview so we can come back to that um, later on maybe i can ask you since we're talking about choosing the right level if you if you have the chat open think about your students maybe just type in what level you think they are more or less obviously there will be quite a bit of difference but are they are they more initial elementary intermediate use the cefr if you if you prefer you can say they're B1, they're A2, or you can say they're beginner, they're advanced. Any any adjective to describe the level of your students? If you type it in the chat, that might be interesting to see. I'll wait, I'll keep an eye on that. If you if you do have access to the chat, that would be useful. Okay, let's continue. Now. Okay. So here is some further facts about the Trinity exams uh, themselves. Um, now, how are the students assessed? It can be face-to-face, -face. the examiner visits your centre, 
um, or uh, it can be online, and that's via Zoom, in fact. Um, again, in your centre, but the examiner um, is zoomed in, shall we say, and it's conducted online. It's exactly the same exam content. It's the same results. It's the same certification. The It's just the mode of assessment is either in person, face-to-face, -face, or online. Okay, now let's take a look. Once we've obviously time to look at that quote, let's look at how we do choose the right grade. Okay, and thanks very much. I can see Rahat, you've got something about initial assessment in the in the chat. Anybody else who'd like to write about their student's grade? That would be very useful. Um, choosing the right grade. So first, it's about familiarizing yourself with the level, uh, with the requirements of, of the, the Trinity Jesse. You know, what are the language requirements? For example, I can see some, some comments in the chat about um, grammar items, you know, present, past, future tense questions, um, initiating, uh, so some communicative skills in there. Have a look in the um, exam specifications in the syllabus, the exam information booklet. There's a booklet you can download and I'll show you now, and it'll tell you what is required at each level. Then it's a case of, okay, thinking, my students, can they do this? They don't have to be perfect, but are they roughly in that area? Then maybe that's the exam I will enter them for. And then I will share the requirements with the candidate and they can work towards they can work towards that. So, of course, you can use the CEFR descriptors and we've we've looked at those already. Ask the learners themselves or maybe, you know, um, ask, you know, what levels you think you are. Maybe they're already using. I don't know, an app on their phone. Maybe they're reading a certain book. Maybe they go to a private class. Maybe they've done an exam before. So asking them um, is, is a good source of information. Um, adaptive questioning. I'm going to show you how we might do this using questions starting low and going up and up and up until students reach a level of sort of optimal difficulty, we might say. Um, I'll show you how we can do that. Um, and use the videos as well. Um, they're very handy for us as teachers to think about what the requirements of the exam are and also with the students later you know showing them look this is what the exam is like they get used to the requirements of the exam and they can think hmm, uh, what would i say in that situation that's a very useful task we'll do that together in a moment i mentioned the topics that candidates bring and that they want to discuss so you can use that as well as a way of thinking about what level your students are um, get them to start talking about their topic and see what language comes out from the student. Um, and of course, there's online placement tests such as the British Council. Uh, Dialang is another one from the University of Lancaster. I'll show you links to those, okay? Let's have a look at that adaptive questioning. Um, here's another uh, example matching the European framework to the different grades. Just a reminder. Um, I'm going to have a look round about here. I think a lot of students that we have and just taking that comment from the chat there, we're looking at sort of are they the lower intermediate or are they higher? I don't know. Um, let's take a look maybe round about the fours, fives and sixes. But anything we do here, you can adapt if you've got very high students or if you've got lower students as well. OK. This is the specifications. OK, so this is the booklet you want. Um, this is a screenshot from the Trinity website. And um, let me get uh, a link for that for you. I can show you, actually, while I find that link, here's where to navigate to. I'm just going to show you this here. This is from the Trinity. In fact, if you type in Trinity Jesse, you'll find exactly um, exactly the link. But I will also put it in the chat for you. Mm -hmm. Just pasting a link into the chat. You can come back to that later. Um, 
But equally, if you go on Google or whatever your search engine is, type in Trinity College, G-E-S-E, -E, it will take you to this page. And what do you do when you get there? Well, exactly as this short screencast showed you, if you scroll down, you can find here the uh, go to guidance and resources. This is a very useful area and click on the Jesse levels. This shows you all the levels and the resources. OK. So we're going to take a look, um, especially at four and six, to show you some examples of how to decide if students are at the lower end or the higher end. Um, there's there's whole guides on the levels split into those uh, three levels together and example videos and all kinds of things. The schemes of work are very useful if you are preparing candidates um, for for an exam and it will give you roughly 30 hours of classroom time um, preparation activities you can find all on the website okay now let's take a look then at that idea of adaptive questioning um if you like we can do this in the chat as well you can type your ideas um for what the next question might be or maybe the answer let's let's say we look at um grade four one of the requirements one of the requirements of grade four is past uh, talking about the past past simple one of the requirements is future tenses well be going to is, is grade four will comes in at grade five but um some questions you can sit and ask with your students or have them ask each other until they reach a point of they're they're getting they're running into difficulty they find they're finding it a little bit hard when you get to that level you might think okay i can enter the student at this level and in x weeks when they have the exam whenever it is or however many maybe it's an intensive course within that time we will study enough so that they'll be able to do well um so we might ask maybe at grade four what did you do last night maybe the candidate says i stayed at home and watched tv so no problems we continue with grade four questions um example question for grade four could be and what are you going to do tomorrow evening and let's see what does the candidate say I don't know. After school, I'm going I'm going to my friend's house. OK, and um, so so far they're doing fine. You think, OK, well, grade four seems fine. Let's go up. Let's go to grade five. Um, one of the things at grade five is reasons. So let's imagine we, we now want to ask them to provide a reason. What question could we ask? Type in the chat if you fancy joining in and we'll see if, uh, see if it's similar to what we have on our slide. OK, so why is a classic question at grade five? An examiner will often ask why for anything. So why are you going to your friend's house? Notice there's a link here uh, back to whatever the candidate said. Again, I'm emphasizing the fact that this is a conversation. It's not just a list of Q&A, Q&A. The examiner will listen to the answers that the candidate gives and try to form an authentic, uh, interactive experience as a normal conversation, as close as a normal conversation as you can get. So why are you going to your friend's house? Candidate says, uh, because we watch videos, play Xbox. They're doing great. Indefinite past at grade five. Um, what's the difference between that and the past simple? Well, you, you can probably guess it's, it's most likely present perfect, maybe talking about past experiences or recent experiences with a bearing on the present. Um, so have you blah, 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 recently? How many times have you? Also at grade five, there's quantifying. So this comes in as a lot, a lot um, as well. OK, how many times have you been there this week? Uh, I, went, I went once this week. I went one time. I go on Tuesdays. OK, so they're doing great. You would continue. Preferences. What could we ask? Preferences. I don't know. He watches uh, TV, plays Xbox. You might ask, do you prefer Xbox or PlayStation? Do you prefer watching TV or, or watching films? There's a variety of questions you could ask. Let's see. Which is better for you, watching TV or playing Xbox? And the candidate says, I prefer Xbox. So this candidate is fine for grade five. Probably it's too easy. So it's time to keep testing them you know, and see, OK, maybe I'm going to put you into level six. As it says here, if all are correct, move on to the next level questions. These are the questions we've just asked. Now into grade six, we're getting a little more, uh, a little more difficult. So maybe there's questions with conditionals. Let's have a look. What will you do if you pass? Uh, if I pass, I'm going to apply. Right. They've, 
fine. No problem with grade six for this candidate. Um, what are you studying? And with futures, you get much more than be going to. So you've got be going to will and present continuous more at grade six. What are you studying? Um, next year, I'm studying architecture if I can. Obligation comes in at grade six. So have to, need, must, and so on. Um, and again, you can see, okay, this candidate, this candidate has no problems at grade six. So we're going to have to keep asking questions, check grade seven, eight, and nine. Um, but the point is, whenever your candidate or maybe group reaches a point where they're finding it difficult, they don't know how to answer, maybe they don't understand the question, you might think, ah, okay, this is the uh, the sweet spot, shall we say. This is the, this is the place where um, they should uh, start preparing for an exam. Okay. Let's have a look. Where can you get some question cards, just like the ones I showed those questions? It's like, where can I find some resources for that? Well, um, if you have a look at that link I gave you um, in the chat and navigate to, as we saw in that video, preparing the conversation in speaking activities, it gives you these question cards okay and the, these ones happen to be for grade four but there's also for a variety of, for the other levels as well and other speaking activities if you already know what level you're preparing it's like oh great great i have some classes some activities i can use in my class as well okay so that's one thing uh we can do OK, we could do the adaptive questioning. Another thing we can do is make use of the videos. And there's um, videos of students in a variety of contexts They're all over the world taking the JESSE exam at different levels. And what is quite, um, quite useful about these as well is there's a description of their grade and the rationale. So it says whether they had A, B or C. It says why. It says what grade they got for the topic, what grade they got for the conversation and any other phases of the exam. So it's a very useful resource for us as teachers and for the students. Now, if we're at the stage where we're thinking, what level do I put my students into? Um, then we should we have a rough air idea and we might think, OK, I'm going to play um, grade seven and see if this is if, if they're able to understand the examiner's questions and to give appropriate answers. Um, let's look, we were just looking at um, grade four, five, and six. So why don't we look at grade four? So grade four, you might remember, is um, it's at A2. Um, um, one moment. We're just talking about um, food. Uh, okay. And um, do you like cooking? I'm just going to pause that there. Could you hear the audio? Did anyone hear the audio just then? On the on the video. I'm going to rewind it a little bit. We're going to watch a short extract. Did you hear that? Thank you, Rad. Rad for, for thank you, thanks, Stacey. Um, I'm just going to rewind it. So this is the second half of a grade four exam. Um, what I'd like you to do. Well, I mean, two things. Think about one, what a good answer would be to the question. And two, your students, uh, is this easy for them? OK, is this are they would they be grade four? Would they be much higher or is this too difficult? What do you think? OK, and this is uh, I, well, what's his name here? I, um, let me check. I think is this Rosario? I think it's possibly Rosario. We'll see. Um, but she, the examiner, Sandy there, she's just asked, she's finished the, the topic and she's moving on to the conversation. And she asks a question, one of the topics of conversation, and there's always a list uh, that the candidates know in advance. One of the topics of conversation is food at grade four. Um, other topics are holidays, uh, weekend activities, uh, hobbies and uh, sports, school. So that's at grade four, at grade five is different, at grade six is different and so on. Anyway, one is food. Let's listen to the question and think about what a good answer um, to this question would be. I'm going to um, actually show you some of the requirements. OK, so this is uh, the language functions of grade four. Um, 
in order to to talk about past events they will need to use past simple talk about future plans and intentions so this be going to comparison so we've got comparatives what you like doing what you don't like doing uh, do you do it well how often you do things these are the key functions of grade four okay and remember that's a 2.1 uh, uh, pre-intermediate level around there okay so anyway let's listen to the question about food um food and um do you like cooking yes i i like i sometimes i prepare uh my my dish mm -hmm. because uh there are to my parents because they are uh, went to work oh yes and uh and they give cooking uh, for me <laughs> ah so uh what other people in your family can cook? Uh, my mother and my father. Yeah. Uh, they cook in, cook, uh, in the evening. In the, in the yeah. Because uh, they are at home and uh, cooking for me and for that. So, um, what's the difference in cooking between your mother, your father, and you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my father is the best. Really? Yeah, really. Okay, I'm going to pause there. Uh, so you, you can probably see where the examiner is going. What's the examiner looking for? And it's like, okay, simple comparisons is a good opportunity to elicit uh, a sample of language about that, elicit what the candidate can do. Uh, talking about likes and dislikes and also maybe uh, frequency. You know, who cooks? When do they cook? How often do they cook? Um, I'll play the rest of his answer and... What do you think? But basically, does he pass? I suppose is is this is this grade four or is he not ready? Or is he is he much better than grade four? Um, see what you think, and then I'm going to show you anyway. The Trinity rationale is this a four, or do you think maybe he should go in a higher level, or um, is he not quite ready? What do you think? Because he invented a new dish. Yeah. But while my heart is uh, stuck. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Is a uh, beans, uh, the carrots, all the dish simple, simple, simple dish. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and you? What do you cook? I, I like my mother uh -huh. because I I don't have a lot of events with uh, like my my father. Uh -huh. I I cooking for uh, eat. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so what uh... okay uh so that's one question there are as you can see there are further questions so that's not the only thing that the candidate's done but think to yourself um is is that is that grade four look at the language requirements is is there enough there um is he is he higher than grade four is he lower than grade four just think for a moment um about that I'll take the opportunity to have a sip of water. You can write your thoughts in the chat if you prefer. What do you think? Any comments on Rosario, I think it was, um, and his performance there, that very short performance, talking about food. Thanks, Rahat. Thank you. Any other thoughts? So as teachers, um, I think what we tend to notice a lot are mistakes, errors, um, wherever there's any error. And that's something that maybe we, we need to be a bit more generous to candidates for and think more about the communication. Because what happens here? Does he express simple comparisons? He does. Not always grammatically correctly but he does manage to do that does he talk about manner and frequency he does about how often um the rest of the you've only seen a small part as well okay of, of a 10 minute exam but basically um if you're thinking oh, i don't know if he's grade four he is okay he he's probably a classic middle grade four here is the um the rationale okay from the group of uh examiners who benchmarked this performance and you can find all of these by the way and lots of different levels as well 
and then a description of why, yes, this is an A, this is a C, why this didn't pass. Um, and it's very useful for, as I say, us as teachers and for the candidates. So he does, oh, it's Salvatore, forgive me. I thought it was Rosario. He does cover the functions well, um, but uh, you, you may have struggled at times here. What did he say? I'm not sure. There is a bit of first language transfer, which means that it's not always ever so clear. Um, he does make errors with some tense structures. My father don't cook, he hate. However, it doesn't impede communication. You know, it's quite quite clear what he's talking about. So there's no breakdown in communication. So overall, it's like, yeah, this is adequate. It's not excellent, but it's adequate. And if I had a student like that, I would say, yeah, grade four, you need to do an exam next week. Sure, go for grade four. Grade four is good for you. It, if you didn't get that, if you're thinking, oh, I'm way off, don't worry, because of course, that's the whole point. The, even like examiners spend a long period of time through training and standardization to be able to recognize what is uh, you know, sufficient, um, good and excellent performance at these different grades. Um, so if you look on the website there, there is um, a good range of videos at different levels, um, which, uh, which describe how the candidates do and whether they're successful or not. And at what level they're successful. Is it, is it an A? Is it a B? Um, I'd recommend definitely looking at those uh, and sharing with the candidates. What you can do with your students is exactly what we did. You can even take a longer stretch. Pause after the examiner's questions. Maybe your students speak in pairs, groups of three, maybe larger groups. I'm not sure how many you have in your class. What would they say? They try and answer. OK, they ask what's different about your mother and father's cooking. Maybe this is a good question for them to talk about. Um, of course, we know that maybe what we're looking for are things like comparatives, you know, uh, it's better, it's worse, it's tastier, you know, it's things like this. Mm, he, what did he talk about? His, his father was more, I know, his mother's more experimental. I can't remember. Or he, and it also, Salvatore himself, he says, I'm like my mother. So that's also a good uh, achievement of the function of making a comparison. Okay. Not always 100% grammatically accurate, but that's, it's not just a grammar test grammar is one element um that is no that is um included in the the specifications okay okay let's take a look at another way of assessing the level remember the the topic i mentioned earlier on so there's always oh excuse me from grade four and above there is a topic uh element there's a topic phase um what do your candidates want to talk about so i, I mentioned you know football singers food um travel uh family uh, there's i mean general thing oh that could be quite general or they might be passionate about something very specific like i don't know uh the inventor of the television you you can get you can get a whole range uh, of different um topics and at high levels with the grade 10 11 and 12 it should be discursive by which i mean there must be opinion so it's like i don't know how to improve air quality in my town is a possibility, or uh, the dangers of social media with teenagers, or something where there's there's an opinion that could be challenged, can be defended, that's at the higher levels, um, that should be included. So ask your students, what would they talk about? What do they want to talk about? Give some examples if they're stuck. Say, look, here's, here are some examples. And again, you can find these in the, uh, the Trinity guides on the website, also in those videos. Um, what do they want to talk about? And then, as it says here, you've got in groups of three, for example, but of course, organize your classroom however however is best. You've got student one, student two, student three. Um, discuss their topic um, with student two. So it's like I'm going to discuss it with student three and student with student two. Student three listens and notes down the language used. Like what did they say? Or just make notes. Um, then you can go back to those guides and say, okay, did you use past simple? Did you use future future forms? Um, did you not use that? Or, you know, these are the things to look out for. Students themselves can become familiar with the requirements, and of course, you, the teacher, you're the ultimate. Um, what should we say, adjudicator uh, in in those matters? Once again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but around that area, they should be achieving the function. And then, of course, you can you can improve. You can make uh, you can do preparation before an exam um, to get better. Okay, so using the topic is is 
is a nice way to check level as well. Now you might be aware of others as well, but here's just a couple of quick online level tests. If you look at the British Council level test, uh, if you go on to Dialang, uh, the University of Lancaster, um, you can do uh, a quick level test as well to see roughly where you might be um, on the, the CEFR, okay? And, okay. Now the reality um, for most of us, I don't know about you, but the reality often when working with groups of students is they're not all of the same level and that can cause you know, challenges. Um, we're well aware of the challenges of people being a variety of levels. So I'd like to focus on the positives. Let's have a look at um, some advantages of working with multi-level classes. Here we go. Excuse me a moment. Excuse me, a little cough there. Um, so here are the advantages. Here are some advantages. Maybe you can think of some more if you can. Do type it in the chat. Um, so we can we can leverage, shall we say, the uh, the differences in 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 levels. We can use higher level students to help with the lower levels. We can create a community of learning. Uh, we can become a bit more independent um, and work together as a group to improve uh, all of our own performances. Um, there are some activities that we can we can do with multi-level classes and there's certain strategies we can use as well like having a buddy system you can have stronger students help uh students of a lower level or at other times you can have stronger students sit together and work on something more difficult uh lower students can also work on their areas of uh of interest Jigsaw activities are quite useful, as it says here, and I'm going to show you some or an online article um, with lots of great ideas for how to use jigsaw as a, a technique in your classes. If you have multi-level classes, also, if you don't have multi-level, to be honest, I think jigsaw activities are fantastic as a, as a way of um, adding communication to reading, grammar and a variety of other um, a variety of other areas, making it more communicative and having a bit of an information gap. Let's have a look at those. Um, I will give you a link now, actually. Where is it? Let me put it in the chat. Give me two seconds. Right. So uh, Jason Anderson, who um, has written a lot of stuff. I mean, I'd recommend anything he writes, to be perfectly honest. Um, but here's a, an article from about five years ago. I'm putting it into the chat. Um, it's from, I believe it's from ETP, is it? Modern English Teacher? Uh, it looks like it to me, but it's also available via his website. Again, I'd recommend that. Have a look. There's lots of very interesting stuff on there. But for our purposes today, this um, this article, I'm just going to show it on the screen there. Uh, this article about jigsaw activities, this is very useful for multi-level groups. OK, it's a short article, three pages, um, and you have a description of different types of jigsaw activities, which can be really handy for multi-level classes, okay? Um, as a quick summary, a story jigsaw, you may have done this with your class. Um, um, if you haven't, I highly recommend it. Um, students have different stories. They read it, summarize it in their groups, and then they join somebody from the other group to retell the story without the original text, okay? So they have to put that aside. They're not reading aloud. They have to actually process it and communicate the key facts to their partners. Uh, in the new group you could do that with two groups three groups four depending on the size of your class really um and you can do other things similarly with uh, grammatical points they have to maybe research or maybe you give them the information and some key examples they have to then go and teach a bit of peer teaching go and teach the other group how to for example make comparatives i don't know or something from the uh, trinity exam requirements that they're aiming for Research jigsaw. So maybe this is useful for uh, preparing for topics, for example. You might give some topics and say, right, go and research this. You guys go and research that, especially if they have access to resources like the Internet or uh, a library. Uh, and then they can come back and tell each other what they found out. Maybe the research part happens as homework. And that's the flipped classroom idea. So you can have a variety of different um, homework tasks where you give people time to research or read something or listen or watch something and come back and share what they found out. 
Um, and spot the difference, Jigsaw. Now here, this requires a bit of creativity from the teacher, but maybe you have a story, two very similar stories, and they have to find the difference. If you use generative AI like ChatGPT, you can quite quickly make these by pasting in a story and asking ChatGPT or whatever software it is to uh, rewrite the story, but change five key facts. Then the two different groups would read the story. And when they come together to explain the story, they should find out, okay, what five things are different? So there's loads of different things you can do with um, jigsaws where you can give one group something slightly more difficult than the other group. And in this way, it works very well with multi-level classes. Okay, I'm just gonna um, show you the teacher support again. Um, in fact, I showed this at the beginning that's available on Trinity. So on the website, I already put that link in the chat earlier on, uh, but on the website, if you look up Trinity GESE, um, Jesse, you can find the full specs, teacher guides, speaking activities, exam videos, so much other stuff, um, really useful things for uh, exam preparation and for other classes if you're teaching in a communicative way. Um, the schemes of work I mentioned earlier, these have 30 hours of teaching time. So it's a plan essentially um, for 30 hours. I don't know how many hours you teach your classes a week. Sometimes people have intensive courses as well. Maybe it's an after school thing, I don't know, but you can use these, adapt these. They have clickable links to worksheets and all sorts of things um, that can help prepare for certain level grades. And again, can be adapted for regular classes. You'll notice there's here things like a board game uh, looking at certain functions or grammatical areas. And then we have the ongoing support like live webinars. Here we are. Um, and the recordings. I believe this is being recorded, plus other exam videos. If you follow Trinity on the social accounts, you can get um, reminded of what's coming up as well. And that leaves us with, yes, five minutes for questions. Um, so, yeah, if you'd like to type your questions in the Q&A, um, which I'm just going to open, and I'll see if I can address. Oh, there's no open questions at the moment. Um, and I don't know. OK, I'm just looking at the answered questions. OK. OK, a couple of questions there. There's what have we got? Something about teacher qualifications. I noticed someone asked about um, earlier on about Spelter, if you're looking at teacher qualifications at that level, then look at the Trinity um, CERT TESOL. That would be one to look at. Hmm. Oh, let's see. Oh, sorry, there's a question in the open question. I missed the beginning. Will it be available to watch afterwards? It's certainly being recorded. Stacy, do we have um, the, any info on when the recording might be um, available? Uh, yes, we, we will be sending them out um, within the week. Obviously, today is the okay. first um, session. Um, we have another session tomorrow at the same time and again Thursday. So if you haven't already registered for those, um, I'd recommend uh, going ahead and doing so. Um, but yes, all the recordings will be um, sent out together. So within the week, I would expect that. Um, yeah, I was going to say, anybody, I noticed some people did join late, which is fine, um, which is why we record these sessions. So you can make sure you don't miss anything. I can see. Oh, there's one question coming there. Thanks, uh, Celia. So you said, why is failing considered in this examination? Um, I'm not sure what you what you mean. If you could type any extra information um, about that. But um, for each grade, Celia, I, if I've understood you correctly, yeah, there are three pass grades. So there's an A, B, C, and D is, is fail. Um, if the question is, why is there a fail grade? I suppose it's because this is uh, a proficiency test. Um, it's it's recognized at different, you know, in different institutions and various stakeholders want to know what level um, an English user is. So if they don't show enough to say that they are, for example, B1 or B2, um, then indeed that means they don't pass and they don't get the certificate. I'm not sure if i've 100 percent understood so please do type extra information if that's not quite what you meant um and there we go i can see a raised hand as well um I'm, alamin if you have a, a raised hand uh i'm not sure how we can respond to that 
you uh, put your query into the, the chat or the Q&A and hopefully yeah. we can help. Ah, thank you. Okay. Celia, just to follow up then before I come to the, the question in the Q&A. Yeah, um, I, now I see what you mean. Okay, so you're asking uh, if, for example, a candidate is entered at grade five, but doesn't show enough for grade five, would they be given a grade four? Anyway, that's not how this exam system works. No, that's why it's important to choose the right level. Uh, and if candidates are entered at the right level, there's no reason why they, they shouldn't succeed. And as I sort of emphasized earlier, it's it doesn't have to be um, your hundred percent um, grammatically accurate in order to, for people to fulfill certain functions. Okay. And there's a question: Should we discourage students from having the same topic? Um, no, not really. I think just to qualify that, it's important that that student's topic is personal to them. So, for example, this morning I had four people. They were all in the same volleyball team. They all wanted to talk about volleyball. That's absolutely fine. OK, but if you if I had a class of students that said, right, everyone's going to do their topic about, um, I don't know, I'm living in Ireland. So maybe St. Patrick's Day, everyone's going to do their topic about that. I don't think that's a good idea. It won't be personal to every student. The, the, the point about the topic is that the candidate brings it. The candidate wants to talk about it and is able to give, um, you know, uh, information about follow up questions and so on. OK. OK. Well, perhaps I'll stop the share there. Um, yeah, I believe um, Alamin asked. Um, in the chat, are these exams suitable for native? I guess native language because. Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about if English is your first language, um, is this a suitable examination for you? It's not designed for that, no. It's designed for people who are learning English as an additional language. Okay, okay great. Do we have any other questions? I think that's everything. I think that's a good place to end it so uh thank you everybody for attending um i hope it was um informative for you i certainly enjoyed it so thank you sean thanks for doing that for us um and yes as i said there are another two uh jesse webinars um same time tomorrow and again thursday and if you did miss the recording or if you want um sorry you did miss the webinar or if you want to watch it again there we will be recording the session and you'll be emailed it to you within the week. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.